serious. Well, it's very serious here tonight in Jerusalem. I'm reporting. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. I'm reporting live from the holy city of Jerusalem. You can hear the sirens in the background. You can hear the situation developing. Uh, a very critical situation has developed. Vladimir Putin just finished his speech in Russia. And it's, uh, guys, the Stark Treaty is over. Putin has suspended the new Stark nuclear treaty. All bets are off. The United States has drawn a line in the sand. He really basically has just threatened the world as he will continue the war with Ukraine. But this thing is bigger than Ukraine. This is going beyond Ukraine. We're now talking about uh, really the line being drawn in the sand between the West and Russia. Matter of fact, Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, his speech comes just three days before the one-year anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced an hour ago that Russia was pulling back from the New START treaty with the United States, which reduces and limits each country's nuclear arsenal. The deal between President Ronald Reagan and uh, Russian President Mikhail Gorbachev is over. And in this regard, I am forced... Putin said to announce today that Russia is suspending its participation in the Strategic Arm Offensive Arms Treaty. Putin said in his annual address to the nation just one day after President Joe Biden made a surprise visit to Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. In a long delayed State of the Nation address, Putin cast Russia and Ukraine as the victims of Western double dealing. He said Russia's not Ukraine was the only fighting for its very existence. The speech reiterated a litany of grievances that Russia's leader has frequently offered as justification for his widely condemned war and his ignored international demands to pull back from the occupied areas that he's taken in Ukraine, including Crimea. This new START treaty, first signed in April of 2010, which was a renewed deal uh, under President Barack Obama, but uh, then which said Russia, U.S. and Russia would would have more than 1,500 nuclear warheads deployed at any time. No more than 1,500. That deals off. Both the United States and Russia are now capable of deploying far more than the allotted nuclear warheads, as Washington and Moscow have a combined total of over 13,000 nuclear warheads. That's 90 percent of the nuclear warheads in the world, folks. So we don't need this situation developing. We don't need to have the United States and Russia or Russia and the West at odds. And by the way, it's not just Russia. When you say Russia, you have to say Iran, North Korea, and China. Because that is the, the, really the, the, the evil empire, if you want to put it that way. That is the uh, coalition that's been built in the world against the United States and its NATO allies. So following this nuclear arms race that largely came to an end at the fall of the former Soviet Union back in 1991, UN has pushed for nuclear disarmament and global warheads inventories to drop since the peak in 1985 that were at 1.70 thousand warheads around the world. Putin's speech comes three days before the one-year anniversary of his invasion of Ukraine. Russia has continued its attack on Ukraine over the last year, despite Western sanctions, losses on battlefield, and Ukraine's defenses have been supported by a number of other nations, mostly which are of the West. Ukraine officials have said they expect Russia to ramp up its offensives in Moscow's acknowledgement of the one-year anniversary of the war. And certainly, now that Joe Biden made this surprise visit, and he basically poked the bear and said, you're not taking Ukraine. The United States is in it to the end. And that was just a couple days be before, after I should say, that Vice President uh, Kamala Harris said that Russia, that Putin and Russian officials were guilty of war crimes against humanity and that they must be, justice must be dealt to them. These are very harsh words coming from the Vice President of the United States. And then there was a very strong action by the President of the United States, Joe Biden, visiting Kiev and Ukrainian President uh, Z Zalomir, Z uh, uh, Vladimir Zelensky. But now, 
Putin has drawn a new line in the sand. He has dr created a new playing field for the war. Nuclear wars are now on the table. Nuclear arms are on the table. There is nobody to stop the acceleration of more uh, enrichment of uranium, more nuclear warheads could be uh, activated, and the threat of World War III is imminent. And I, of course, study Bible prophecy. You can say Gog and Magog if you want to, because you've got the Iranians threatening Israel right here, this holy city that's behind me right now. You have China standing up and saying that Taiwan belongs to us, threatening Taiwan. You have North Korea firing two more intercontinental ballistic missiles at Japan this morning, threatening the peace of, of, of the uh, South Pacific, whether it be between South Korea and Japan. It's North Korea threat, the Chinese threat, the Iranian threat, and the Russian threat. We are now facing potentially four fronts of a global war. A potential World War III, or in the Bible says in Revelation chapter 9, the Sixth Trumpet War. Certainly Ezekiel 38 could also come into play. Russia invasion of Israel, which is Ezekiel 38. All of these things are now in play. I mean, literally, guys, the, what the Bible says is going to happen, and the nations that are going to participate in it are on the field. That's exactly the nations. They're in position. They're threatening the very nations they're supposed to threaten. They have the technology. They have the armaments. They have the anger. They have the motivations. They're pointing guns at one another. This is a time like we've never seen. Something biblical is going on right now with the signs of the second coming of Christ, of the Messiah. And people need to give their lives to Christ. They need to give their lives to Yeshua they need to receive Yeshua as the Messiah before time runs out. I plead with you from the holy city of Jerusalem. I stand here today and I plead with the world to be prepared for the coming of Yeshua. You know, the Mount of Olives is just... Let me look around here. Just give me one second to get myself oriented here. Oh, yeah. Right over my shoulder. Right over my, uh, right over my right shoulder. You can see the Dome of the Rock. Between those trees, the, the a little bit of the golden glare. Then right there to the, just there down the hill, you see that is the, that's, that's the Mount of Olives. That's where Christ will return. When he comes, he will stand on that Mount of Olives because there's a war breaking out here in Jerusalem against Jerusalem. And today, we're closer than ever before to that war. We're closer today. We've gotten closer to that war within the last hour than we have in the history of the world. The signs of his coming are everywhere. The war is coming. Can't stop it. I don't want it. Please, don't wait too late. We're running out of time. I'm Pastor Paul Begley pleading with the world from Jerusalem. Please, come to Yeshua.